Welcome to your Cohesion Classroom. In this lesson, we will take a look at how to rename mixed numbers to subtract. At the end of this video, you will have access to your tips and takeaways, allowing you to focus on the content being presented. You can always access any of our tips and takeaways from the lesson page before or after watching the lesson. Subtracting mixed numbers that need to be renamed is very similar to subtracting whole numbers that need to be renamed. Students will need to rename the fraction in the greater mixed number in order to subtract the smaller mixed number. Before we work on renaming mixed numbers to subtract, let's look at a simple subtraction problem. 4 and 5 6 minus 2 and 4 6. Once the mixed numbers are lined up vertically, we can begin to subtract. Our first step is to subtract the fractions 5 6 minus 4 6. This equals 1 6. Now we can subtract the whole numbers 4 minus 2 equals 2. Through our subtraction, we have created the mixed number 2 and 1 6. So 4 and 5 6 minus 2 and 4 6 equals 2 and 1 6. Let's take a look at another example, only this time we'll make the fraction in the smaller mixed number greater than the fraction in the greater mixed number. 4 and 2 6 minus 2 and 5 6. Let's line the mixed numbers up vertically first, with the greater mixed number on top. Starting in the fractions column, the problem is asking us to do 2 6 minus 5 6. We cannot subtract 5 6 from 2 6 because 5 6 is greater. Arriving at this point is unsettling for students, as they are used to subtracting mixed numbers where everything just works out easily and smoothly. Students have some additional thinking to do here. This is where we will need to rename the fraction. Just as in simple subtraction problems, I need to look to the next column. In this case, that is the ones place, to regroup. Ask yourself, how many six do I need to make one whole? I know that my denominator represents how many pieces I would need to make one whole. So the answer is six one six parts to make one whole. I need to take one of my wholes and turn it into six. If I take one whole away to break it into fractions, that changes my whole number from four to three. Now I have the six six from the whole plus the two six from the fractional part of my mixed number. I need to add those two together to equal 8 6. My rename fraction is 3 and 8 6. Please note that the value or the amount the mixed number represents did not change. All that changed was that one of my holes was renamed to a fraction. With a mixed number that I can now subtract from, I will follow the basic steps we reviewed at the beginning of this lesson. 8 6 minus 5 6 equals 3 6 and three minus two equals one. This creates the mixed number one and three six. So four and two six minus two and five six equals one and three six. Another form subtracting with mixed numbers can take is when a mixed number is subtracted from just a whole number. Let's take a look. Five minus two and one fourth. Students are in a comfort zone when subtracting mixed number by mixed number and no renaming is required. Much like the stop and think moment created by the need to rename the fraction in the greater mixed number, a question like this does the same. When looking at the question, students would immediately notice that there is no fractional part to subtract one fourth from. Some students might say, you can't do this question, or I think there's been a mistake with this question but there is absolutely nothing wrong here. Five is greater than two and one fourth, and therefore you should be able to complete this subtraction equation. But you need a fraction to subtract from because you can't subtract one fourth from nothing. This is where students would apply their knowledge of renaming or regrouping fractions to turn our whole number five into a mixed number. We need to take one of our wholes and turn it into a fraction that one fourth can be subtracted from. But how do we know what denominator to use? Well, 
Since only fractions with common denominators can be added or subtracted, your decision is determined by the denominator of the other fraction in the question, one-fourth. If we're working with fourths in the given fraction, the fraction we create must be in fourths for this equation to be completed. So, the one whole I'm taking from five will be renamed to fourths. And how many fourths is in one whole? Four fourths. I will rename five as four and four fourths. Now I can subtract. Four fourths minus one fourth equals three fourths. And four minus two equals two. So five minus two and one fourth equals two and three fourths. Students may subtract the larger fraction from the smaller fraction instead of renaming. Remind students that they must always subtract from top to bottom. If they can't, they need to rename it to make it possible. Students may make simple computational errors when subtracting. Have students check over their work for silly mistakes. When finished subtracting, have students add the two smaller mixed numbers together to see if the sum is the same as the largest mixed number. This will ensure their work is correct. When subtracting a mixed number from a whole number, students are often initially confused because they're not used to turning a whole number into a mixed number. Encourage students to rely on their experience with regrouping mixed numbers as the same logic applies. Take one whole and turn it into its fraction equivalent. To help solidify understanding of how to rename mixed numbers to fractions, Revisit the lesson, How to Rename Fractions and Mixed Numbers. To gain a full understanding of this concept, visit the lesson page to view the rest of the Add and Subtract Fractions set of lessons. Uniting students and families in learning, we are Cohesion Education. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.